Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kay and this is All Things Kay and I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me on another video. So in this video, I'm just gonna play in makeup. Everyone's talking about fall being around the corner and they're ready for fall and the fall vibes. I'm not. I'm a summertime girl. I love the heat. I love the warm weather. I love the bright sun and I am not. I'm holding on to summer as long as I possibly can. So I am going to do a bright colorful look and I want to feature the Kaleidos Escape Pod. I picked this up a while back and I haven't used it yet and I picked it up specifically to do some summertime looks with it and that's what that looks like. And I might just deepen it up using the Kaleidos Club Nebula. This palette has a lot more deeper shades in it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna deepen it up but these shades over here are pretty deep and I think they will look good in the look. And they also have some brighter colors there for the summer. So this palette is very versatile and I love this palette. But I really just want to feature this palette um, mostly in the look. I'm going to use their Tone Activator Primer. And this is supposed to help the colors pop a bit more, I guess. So since I'm working with such bright colors... I want it to pop. And since I've been out and about at the pool, I'm finally in my summertime shade. I got a beautiful golden bronze tan. And I'm gonna use one of my summertime foundations, the Born This Way. And this is in the shade Maple. I haven't used this in forever because I'm usually a lot lighter than this. I'm at least two to three shades darker right now. And a lot of my other foundations that I love just do not match. So I'm going to just use my summer shades in the foundations that I have. And then I picked up the Taint Idol um, Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. I've used it once, but I want to give it another try because I'm not sure if I like this yet. If I don't, it's going back because it's quite pricey. So what I'm going to do is zoom you guys in, turn on some music, and we are going to play in some color and just hold on to summer. If you want to hold on to summer with me, stay tuned and keep watching. Every time 
guys, I thought the camera was recording and it wasn't, so I'm just popping on. I did put the Makeup Forever eyeliner in the shade Forest in the lower waterline and lash line and buffed it out. And I'm gonna go back into the palette and use um, maybe this green here on part of the lower lash line and then maybe use this color in the inner corner. I love you what you want to be, my lover, yeah My little baby girl rise on me My little baby girl rise on me Maria, Maria, Maria ah. Every time you're looking out for me I'm just gonna put on some mascara on the lower lash line and then I'll come back and we'll finish the rest of the face But this is the completed eye so far Really eye, yeah, yeah, yeah With the girl like a Maria, Maria completed look and this is such a summer vibe i feel like i'm ready for carnival and uh i who, who said something about fall i ain't done with summer yet this look is fire now let's discuss some of these products and wrap up this video so let's start off with the eyeshadow palette i only use the escape pod palette for this look and i found I don't know. A lot of people say the Kaleidos mattes are easy to work with. I don't find that they're easy to work with. I don't know if it's the base. Um, talking about the base, the Kaleidos Tone Activator Primer, I hate this thing. It's so thin and watery and it's not as um, pigmented. Like I could see my skin through it. I don't like this and I didn't set it because I wanted to see how the primer worked and I found it really hard to blend the shadows i'm gonna have to try this palette again with a different base to see if it's easier to work with and easier to blend but that made it even harder for me and i found that there was a lot of patchiness um in the matte shades when i was blending them and i had to build them up it could also be that this is more like a bright pastel -y palette so for my skin tone that could be an issue too why it's taking so much to build up but that base does not help i do not recommend this i do not like this the palette however these colors are vibrant these colors are beautiful it takes a bit to build up especially the mattes the shimmers the shimmers in here are beautiful do you see this color on i have these two shades right here on the lid and i love it i love the shift especially in this one it has more of a indigo type shift and then this one is more of a pinky shift that's closer to the end so overall i really enjoyed using this palette i love the way the look came out but again even in my club nebula review when i did looks with that i had problems with the mats the mats just do not work for me it could be technique i don't know but i'm gonna try this again with a with one of my regular eye primers and set it and see if they the mattes blend better let's talk about this concealer i put it in the box you want to know why because it's going back this is my second time trying it and it's nothing to write home about it's i think they said it's a medium buildable coverage but it's really light i ain't got time for light coverage i love full coverage everything i love full coverage foundation i love full coverage concealers i i'm not down with this and this is like 44 canadian dollars and it ain't doing nothing it's going back it's around that 42 44 around that it's going back because it's not working i don't like that the huda lipstick oh i did change up the lipstick a little bit i use the pat mcgrath um ground control lip liner and the huda lipstick in raja this is such a nude nude 
um, but I felt like it was just a little bit too nude, so I had to go over it with my Fenty Gloss Balm in the shade Cupcaking, just to add a little bit of, I don't know, more, more pink to it. This is a nude nude. This type of nude will be perfect with a black smoky eye or a dark brown smoky eye, and then this nude on the lip. But for this look, I felt like my lips needed a little bit more a little more of a pink tone instead of a true nude tone but I love the formula of these lipsticks and you know I love the Pat McGrath lip liner so for the foundation I haven't worn it in a while um, so far so good it's not sinking into any of my lines I did set it with the MAC Studio Fix powder that's how I use powder foundation as like a finishing powder because um, I like a matte base I have normal skin type dry hella dry in the winter and your girl likes some matte shit like i want it matte so these two together look good so far and so far so good again my summer shade is maple and the shade that i have in the studio fix is c6 and that's what i have on i use the um laura mercier translucent honey setting powder um for some reason, I like the original set, the original translucent, because the translucent honey, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. It looks okay right now, but when it first goes on, I'm not like, ah, uh, I love this. I have to like work with it, but it can also be this damn concealer too. So I can't really hate on it too much. I only like using this when I'm tanned like I am now. Otherwise, I'm using the original Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. That is one of my all-time favorite setting powders. I will continue to repurchase it and use it. For blush and highlight, I shot my stash. I went in with this MAC Groovy. Um, it's a glow play blush, like a... Um, putty formula you can see the indentation and I just feel like it didn't pick up well with a natural hairbrush so I have to go in with a synthetic and it just gives a nice coral flush to the cheek which I think is perfect for summer and this highlight though I haven't used this in such a long time this is the artist couture diamond luxe luminizer in honey drip hello they can see me from Mars, and that's the type of highlighter I love. Because this shine, this shine is fabulous. So I love that. Okay, two more things, and I'm like going out of order. I forgot to talk about the Rare Beauty Primer. This is the Always an Optimist Pore Diffusing Primer. I don't like this. I don't feel like it diffuses my pores. I feel like it makes my pores look even bigger. So this is a no-no. I've used it a few times. It feels nice on the skin, but it doesn't do nothing for my pores. I used one of the pawpaw sponges, which was recommended by my girl Heavy on the Chai. And so far, this is the best sponge besides the Beauty Blender. I could see myself using this. Now the trick is, how does this wash? Because some of the other sponges, after one wash, they're ripping. So that's the trick. I'll keep you guys posted on how this sponge washes up. But I love the size of it. I love how soft it is. It is definitely the best dupe to the Beauty Blender so far. When I was using it, I was like, oh, okay. I bought about five of these. And yeah, I can see why people don't buy the beauty blender i'm not saying that i'm gonna stop buying the beauty blender i'm just saying that this is a good dupe for a dollar what was it dollar 25 dollar 55 canadian oh yeah very good dupe highly recommend them but i'll keep you guys posted on how they wash up because it's one thing to be buying a sponge and then when you wash it it's torn in half or it has pieces coming out of it so i'll keep you guys posted on that and is that everything? I think that's everything I touched on. I think that's everything. Again, I will list all the products I've used in the description section down below. If you like these types of videos and you are holding on to the summer season, don't forget to thumbs up this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload another video. And until next time, bye guys.